Today I'm going to show you how you can blur out the background of your images with the all new lens blur effect in Lightroom Classic version 13. Adobe added a pretty cool new feature called Lens Blur into Lightroom Classic as well as Lightroom CC in the October 2023 release and it's actually pretty easy to use but it doesn't work too well in all kinds of scenarios so I'm going to tell you how to use it as well as when and where to use it so which kind of photos it works with and what type of photos it doesn't work with and I'm also going to show you a pretty cool trick how you can create a miniature effect with this tool. Now to begin with do keep in mind that it's still an early access feature so it's kind of in beta even though you have access to it it might not work perfectly and it might be a bit slow but it's a pretty cool feature. So jumping into Lightroom for this tutorial I'll be using this photo of a man standing in a mountain landscape. To find the effect just go into the develop module and scroll down to where you see lens blur. In order to use this effect all you need to do is click on apply. At this point Lightroom will scan through the image and use AI to determine how close to the camera or how far away from the camera each part or each object in the image is and then create a depth map based on that analysis and then apply blur and bokeh based on that depth map to the image and you can further tweak the depth map if you need to later on manually, but we'll get to that later on in this video. So the basic use of the lens blur effect is really that simple. Just click on apply here and Lightroom will do all of the hard work for you. Now at this point there are several things that you can tweak manually to get the result you want to. The first thing and the easiest thing is the blur amount and as the name suggests this will tweak the amount of blur your image will have. So going higher will add more blur, going lower will add less blur. Now the next thing on the list is bokeh control. What bokeh means are those out of focus orbs of light that you see in the out of focus areas of a photo. So in here you can open up the bokeh tweaks from the little arrow on the right and in here you get a couple of settings. The first one is the shape of the bokeh. Let's just zoom way into this area of the image where we can clearly see a few bokeh balls. Choosing the shape will depend on the image you are working with and the style that you are going for but I find the first and the last ones to be my favorite. Just play around with this and see what you like. I'll just stick to the first option here for now for this photo. Under the shapes you have a boost slider as well. Now what the boost slider does is it just increases the brightness of the bright bokeh areas. So bringing the boost slider up will make the bokeh balls brighter and bringing it down will make them darker. So the next thing you have here is the focal range adjustment. On the right hand side you have two buttons. The first one is a subject selection button and this will make Lightroom automatically select the subject of your photo and make sure that that subject is in focus. Now the second one is a target button that lets you select a target from the photo itself. So just select the target tool and then click on your image to select where you want the focusing point to be at. So the object that you select with the targeting tool will be in focus. Now below this you have a slider that will let you tweak the focal range or the focusing point if you don't want to use the subject selection or the targeting tools. You can also increase the range that is in focus if you want to have more of the depth range in focus or you can also decrease the range if you want to have less in focus. Focus. The last thing here in the lens blur effect panel is the depth map. Now you can click on visualize depth to see the depth map that Lightroom has automatically created for you. The brighter or the yellower areas are the ones that Lightroom thinks are closer to the camera and the purple or dark areas are farther away from the camera. Opening up the refine tab will let you refine the selection. So for example if Lightroom has made a mistake with your subject you can use the focus and blur options here to paint in areas of the depth map to be either blurrier or more in focus. There's also an amount slider to determine how much you want to tweak the mask as well as size, feather and flow sliders to tweak the brush just like with a mask brush. You also have the auto mask option to help Lightroom keep your painting within bounds of objects just like with regular masks as well. Now every time you want to paint on a new area be sure to click on the little plus icon next to the focus and blur buttons to create a new paint stroke. But even though you can manually tweak the depth map it's really hard to do manually so your best bet is actually to hope that Lightroom will do a good enough job automatically so that you don't have to tweak the map manually. Now if Lightroom doesn't do a very good job it's going to be very hard for you to actually get a good selection with your depth map. Now even though I really like the fact that this new lens blur effect is now in Lightroom and I really like the things you can do with it with blurring out the background a bit more and creating a bit of depth into your image, I would really avoid going too far with it. It can really quickly start to look very ugly and very fake and unnatural so I would really be very subtle with this effect even though I do think it's a cool effect to have. But as long as you're going to be subtle enough with it and you don't overdo it, it'll be a great effect to have in your toolkit and to bring out the subject of your photos. Now with all of that being said, the lens blur effect doesn't really work too well with all types of photos so next up I'm going to show you what types of photos it works very well on and what types of photos it doesn't really work at all with. 
Photos that have a very clear subject that's already in focus with the background being blurred out will be very easy for Lightroom to analyze, especially if the subject is a person. So anytime you have a photo with a subject that already stands out from the photo, you can easily use the lens blur effect and actually even make it fairly strong and it will still look good. Now keep in mind that the edges of hair will get a bit unnatural. Now even if you have a clear subject but you have some foreground elements in there, Lightroom may really struggle. So I find the lens blur effect to be quite bad with photos with a lot of foreground elements, especially leaves of trees. The blur just isn't going to look good and natural with photos with a lot of foreground elements. But do keep in mind that this is an early access feature, so I'm hoping it will get a lot better in the future, so maybe these issues will be fixed in future updates. Now also photos where you don't really have a lot of depth will be hard for Lightroom to analyze and it will most likely create a depth map that is way too strong, once again resulting in a very unnatural blur. But, however, these wide shots that get blurred out unnaturally can actually be made to look like miniature photos. So, for example, with this photo, I'm going to set the target focal point on the bridge in the foreground here, and then pump the blur amount all the way to 100, and this will give the photo a nice miniature effect, so it doesn't look natural at all. But if this is an effect that you want to go for, then this is the way to do it in Lightroom now. And you couldn't really do this too well in Lightroom before, but now this lens blur effect will help you create that miniature effect, if that's something you want. But that is all I have about the new lens blur effect in Lightroom. I really hope Adobe keeps on improving this because it's a really great tool to have in Lightroom, especially if you're taking photos with, say, a smartphone that doesn't really get that depth in the photo unless you're using like a portrait mode. But if you're not, then you can now do it all in Lightroom as well. So that's a really cool tool to have inside of Lightroom, even though it doesn't yet work quite perfectly. But that is why I hope Adobe keeps on improving on it. I'd really like to know what you think, so just drop a comment down below and tell me what you think about this new feature and also if there are any questions that you have just drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out even though I don't work at Adobe so I might not know everything but I'll do my best to try and help you out at least. So that is all I have for today. Thank you for watching and I hope I will see you in the next one. Shoo.